Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today I'm going to do something fun, I'm going to review one of your guys' data science projects. Now I posted in the YouTube community a couple weeks ago about if there was interest in this, and a lot of people had, had really positive responses to that. So I'm happy to be able to debut this. It might be a new series, again, if this is received relatively well. If you'd like to be featured in the next one of these, your project, your resume, whatever that might be, please let me know in the comment section below and we can make that happen. So a special thank you to Justin for letting me review your projects and your GitHub repo. I'm gonna go through these and kind of look at the overall feel of, of the repo uh, or, or his GitHub profile and I'll go into one specific project and make some critiques to talk about things he did well and some of the things that he could do better. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe and turn on notifications to be alerted when I post my next weekly video. All right, let's jump right into Justin's repo here. So the first thing I notice is a good kind of high quality picture. I think that really helps whenever these people are going into your repo, it's to understand how you think and get to know you better picture of yourself that looks professional definitely doesn't hurt. I also see he has quite a few repos here. He had mentioned to me that he did a couple projects for some of the coursework that he did or through some of the, I believe, nano degrees he did. So let's just really quickly look at one of these. This isn't going to be the focus here, but it looks like it was through Udacity's deep learning nano degree. And I think it's awesome that they have you do projects like this. And I have no problem with anyone putting these projects on their GitHub. If he wanted to really differentiate this, he could reuse a lot of the same code. He could basically just use different data, and that would make this a project that is very unique to him that he could tell a good story about. A lot of the times these projects have you create a website or an API endpoint, and this is a great example of how you could just flip this into something that is again unique to you and tells a story about the things that you're interested in and the data that you're interested in. So I believe Justin wanted me to go in and review this project. So let's just mosey through it and see if we find anything interesting. So I love the table of contents here. I think that that's a, a great touch. That's something that I omitted in some of my repos. So maybe I should go back through and do that. There's a background, there's a lot of nice, beautiful pictures, and there's these awesome looking graphs. So one thing that I, I, I believe that this is a exploratory analysis, which is perfectly fine, but I would say that upfront, so the person going through isn't necessarily looking for a model and not, and not finding it. I also think just reading through this background that it's, it's really high level, you know, you say what you do, but you don't say why you're interested in the subject. So I would like to see a bit about if, for example, you were looking to find new restaurants or you were trying to ask very specific questions of the data. An example of that would be if you were trying to find the area of the city that has the highest rated restaurants or the, the priciest area of the city, or if you were trying to find restaurants that were overrated, where the, the price of the food was well beyond the ratio of of you know the price to the actual rating that they get so putting questions like that maybe as bullets in the background section could help a reader come in and understand why you were doing this and what they can expect to find in some of the visuals that you're showing down here now let's look it looks like he used the yelp api which i really like I've never used this API before, but I think it shows really good skills that you went out and you collected this data using the API endpoint. The next thing I'd like to look at is the data gathering and this Yelp helpers. So it looks like these are just Yelp helper functions and he gathers the data in a Jupyter notebook. Honestly, I personally would prefer to see you gather data through just a regular Python notebook. Jupyter isn't necessarily built to scrape data and bring it in. So a lot of the times I'll either, I'll basically run any of the web scraping stuff that I do or the API calls via the command line. That just is an easier approach if you're trying to pipeline data. You can set it as a job rather than having to go through and manually do it each time. So I don't think that that's a problem here. I just think that in the future in, in practice, 
That is how it's done a lot more often rather than being done in a Jupyter Notebook. Let's now look at the actual notebook here. I think he had a link down here to the notebook in Notebook Viewer. I haven't personally used this before, but I really like this. It is more interactive and it limits the chances that anything goes wrong with the notebook. So if I figure out how to use this, I will leave a link to that in the description below. Again, he uses the plain text very well where he puts the description, some summary statistics, and also the, the workaround, uh, the links to all the different places. Again, I would put some of those questions up here in the summary, just like in the readme that we talked about. Everything looks good with the readme here. I like the null values. I usually like to do percent null as well. That's something that is semantic, that's up to your exploration, but that helps me understand the, the data, what's relevant here. One thing that I also like to see is just the shape of the data, how many rows and columns. I know he's, he said somewhere around how much data was there, so a thousand restaurants, but just a, a general shape or even a little, uh, the head of the data, just showing what some of the data actually looks like can be helpful for us to understand what's going on when he manipulates it. So the cleaning all looks pretty good. I like that you have exactly what you did with it. I think that that's important. And uh, once we start with the visuals, again, I like the colors. I like using Seaborn rather than Matplotlib. It, it makes a lot of that a lot easier. Let's see here. Again, you might want to look at some some different you know, ratios of this, like price to rating ratio, uh, review count to rating ratio, things like that. That could be particularly interesting. I know these are just histograms. I also recommend looking at a few box plots. That kind of also helps you understand some of the shape and how also how the data is distributed. It distributed but you can get a better idea about the outliers when you use a box plot as well. So I really like these. They're a little bit, you know, this is semantics and I, I won't critique anyone for, for semantic choices, but I think you could make these different colors or something uh, just so we know that they're all evaluating different things. Uh, again, that is not a big deal. I would potentially have some different takeaways, um, you know, beyond beyond this. I also think you could probably take this uh, a step deeper, and you know, maybe dive down into one of the specific categories, for example, vegan food, uh, and have some insights surrounding that. So it looks like you used Folium to create your visualizations and you got the zip codes using this function. Again, I really like these visuals. I think it's awesome. You can kind of drag them around. You can zoom in, zoom out. I'm not sure if you can overlay using Folium where you could actually say that this is a graph for rating, but I think that that would really be useful to anyone viewing it to know that this heat map is for rating rather than having to go above and, and view it up there. Same thing with this one. Uh, restaurant density, price by area, or view count by area. So one thing I think is interesting here is that the number of restaurants, like the density, there isn't that many reviews for those restaurants up here. So that's something you could dive into further and maybe understand why that is. Perhaps, you know, some of these restaurants uh, that were up here where, where it's very dense, were more recently created and they just don't have as many reviews or something like that, but I'd really love to understand a question like that better. So it looks like it's the end of the exploratory analysis. Again, I think this is really good. I love the visuals. I would like you to see, to see you go just one step deeper and try and explore some of those kind of weird questions or, or, or second order questions that we that I'd addressed, like the, the ratios of pricing to ratings or why something in these maps, like the, the rating, the number of restaurants and the number of reviews didn't quite match up. So an example of that would be in my data science project from Scratch series. I scrape a lot of data from Glassdoor. And one of the things that I noticed is the salaries that were being offered in New York were not as high as you'd expect based on the cost of living. 
So I really dove deeper into understanding that, and I found some pretty interesting things related to the types of positions that they were hiring for relative to San Francisco or Washington DC. So that's kind of what I am talking about when I uh, am mentioning going deeper into the data there. I also, I, again, I think an exploratory analysis is fine, but you could probably do some cool clustering related to the restaurants here. Obviously they're, they're grouped by different types of cuisine, but if you took that out, how would, how would you be able to understand, um, you know, how would these naturally group together? You could also probably do something to predict the, um, the rating a restaurant would get. And those are very simple, simple models that you could add on to this. I, I love this data set. I, I love what you've done with it. And I'd, I'd love to see you expand it and do more and, and maybe even make this into a product or service or API endpoint. Um, so again, great job, job, Justin. I hope that this helps you, you know, build out your portfolio further. I hope that whoever is watching this really took something useful away from this demonstration. And if you'd like to see more of these, or you'd like me to actually review your GitHub repo or one of your projects or resumes, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.